Hey everybody, Dave Monahan, Goods and Tools and Supplies, and time once again for another Tech Lab Tuesday. Today we're going to talk about magnets and the ability to check for cracks without using a magnet. We'll call that the chemical method. I want to first talk about the uh, magnets that we all grew up with. Well, maybe not the ones we grew up with, because some of us have been in this business a good long time. And the original magnets were basic horseshoe magnets, rare earth horseshoe magnets that we would drag along the cylinder head or drag along the engine block, spraying powder and, and wrestling with them to, to get them on and off the component. In today's world, we've got a better system. It's called the electromagnet right here. Now, this particular one, this is our heavy duty unit. This is our MMP210. And it's 110 volt, made right here in this great country, the U.S. of A, and exclusively available from your friends here at Goodson Tools and Supplies. What I really like about this is, it's one, it's very heavy duty. Two, it has articulating legs that I can move around and conform to whatever irregular surface is on this workpiece when I'm trying to go down uh, looking for those uh, cracks. And as you all know, uh, over time, certain applications have a certain uh, area where they're more prone to crack than other applications. And that's just something you learn uh, with time. This is available 110 volt for power right here, or we can export these as well as a 220 volt unit. But I don't want to get away from the fact that today I want to show you how this thing works. Now, before we can use this magnet, we have to determine what type of powder we're going to use. Now, we offer powders in a variety of different colors, white, yellow, and red. We've got it in one-pound containers, five-pound containers, and even 25-pound containers out there. That's our dry mag powder. And we've got to get that powder out of this container and onto this workpiece. And so we've got a couple of different ways to do that as well. We've got this nice little spray bulb, and we've had this in the product line for goodness gracious, probably 25 years. It's quick, it's fast, and you can sprinkle that powder quite easily. Last several years, we came up with this little spray bomb here. We can put powder in this glass vessel, put the lid on it, and then we can just direct and have a little bit more finesse and control when we're putting that powder. Regardless of which one you use, Make sure that you're not just dumping powder all over the place. Remember, the guy that owns that machine shop's got to pay for all that powder you're wasting. So be conservative with your powder. Use it effectively. Use it efficiently. But make sure that you're also not just scattering it all over the workpiece. Also, good lighting is, is key to success with regards to crack detection. And I know in the teardown uh, departments and the cleaning rooms, you don't always have the best lighting. But when it comes to... Uh, particle inspection, we want the best lighting possible. So make sure you have good ambient lighting in that particular area of the machine shop so that you can get a good eye for that workpiece to see those cracks as they're made available for the combination of the powder and the magnetic forces created with this electromagnetic MMP210 crack detection unit that you see right here. Now, I've got a, a, a cast iron head here. I've already got a bulb uh, with powder in it. So I'm going to go ahead and actually give you a demonstration. I've articulated my legs correctly. And one thing I want to point out before I get into that, this is not a continuous hold button. We only really want to hold this for, for a few seconds. I would say five, maybe seven seconds at a time. You don't want to hang on to that thing for 30 minutes. You'll just burn the whole unit up. So keep that in mind. It's not a continuous duty switch. It's an intermittent duty switch. But again, once we get our legs to conform to uh, the different configurations of this particular workpiece, then we can go to work looking for that crack. So we spray our powder on first. You can see how that powder is, is uh, getting sprayed out of here. I'm trying to do two things at the same time. So when you spray the powder onto the, the workpiece, you're going to test and then you come back through with the magnet itself, or you can do this simultaneously. You can spray the powder and use the magnet uh, intermittently uh, between that. As you can see right here, we've already located the crack on this, and uh, I'll have this come on in and a little bit closer so you can see it, but right there, we'll point that out to you, right there is where that crack is on that exhaust valve seat. So we've identified that crack with a traditional electromagnetic crack detection unit, our model MMP210. 
That's where that is. So now we can make a decision on how to repair that crack. Of course, we're going to have to counterbore that valve seat up. We can uh, go through a pinning process, either with iron tight, uh, the tapered crack repair pins is one of the better methods that, uh, that are out there, and it's been around for, for a long, long time. But whatever method you choose to use, make sure you have structural integrity in that crack repair as you get through that uh, repair process. So the now, there's another way to detect cracks, and that's chemically. Here we've used mechanical means, powder, and magnets. Uh, we can also do that chemically. Now, when this stuff first came out, it was mostly used for our aluminum applications, like you see right here. Uh, because guess what? This magnet doesn't pick up aluminum. It also doesn't pick up gold. As soon as I can get one of these magnets to find gold, well, I'm going fishing in the Gulf of Mexico looking for me some Spanish galleons from the pirate days of days gone by. But all right, I'm getting, I'm getting <laughs> carried away here. Aluminum. Magnets don't work. We've got to use chemicals. There's a couple. Of There's ways. a three-pack process in our AC kit to chemically check for cracks in aluminum or even cast iron like we've got right here. Designed for aluminum but can still also be used on cast iron. First, you've got a cleaner. That's the AC1. You've got a penetrant die. That's the AC2. And then finally, you've got a developer. That's the AC3. This three-part process will actually identify and enhance with a color change to the base material of the workpiece that you happen to be inspecting. It'll change the color on it and you should be able to see that with the naked eye. But it's a three-part process. You've got to go AC1 cleaner, AC2 penetrant, and AC3 developer to make that process happen. There's also a another way to use chemicals as well. A lot of people are going with the uh, uh, the UV lights, the black lights that we all had back in the 70s. and uh, But now we can utilize them with another crack detection. It's called the Glow Kit. So it has, again, a, a cleaner. You've got to clean it. It's got a, petrant, a penetrant, a penetrant, the Glow 2. And the Glow 3 is the actual developer. But the beauty of this particular chemical is when you put it under that black light, like our DFL 364, this is a little pocket light, high intensity, UV uh, light, and it'll actually make that chemical reaction pop so you need to get a better uh, uh, look at it to ensure you have casting structural integrity before you spend all those hours and, uh, and, and machine tools uh, bringing this cylinder head to its completion for your customer. You don't want to go through all that work and then at the end of that process find out you didn't have structural integrity in your casting. You want to make sure you have that whether it's cast iron or aluminum. There's one other method of crack detection and most of the time this is used uh, on crankshafts. And the reason I like this one, this has a, a special uh, crack detection uh, fluid in here. We've got uh, uh, particulates also inside of here and then it creates an aerosol. We're able to liberally spray it on and you know how it is with the irregular surfaces on a crankshaft. But we can spray this right on the crankshaft. It has a clean factor onto it. We can then articulate our magnet around that crankshaft and on crankshafts in particular we're looking for surface cracks on these structural surface cracks that may uh, give a suspect as to the integrity of that crankshaft. Again, if there is a crack in that crankshaft, that can be a catastrophic experience on, on the application, whether it's a street application. It's even more catastrophic if it's in a performance, especially in drag racing. You got 11, 12,000 horsepower, top fuel, nitro, funny car engines plowing down that thousand foot mark. And if that crankshaft is fatigued, we have a catastrophic event to the tune of some, some serious wallet damage when that component lets go. So a lot of race teams use this MFA-16 to confirm that those crankshafts do have good integrity, and they also use it on the cast iron uh, connecting rods uh, as well. The aluminum connecting rods you'd have to go through the uh, AC kit or the glow kit to get to it. Okay, now I want to show you actually how this glow material works. First, the cleaner. You gotta spray that on first. Then we got the penetrant, the glow number two.
And then finally, we've got the developer, glow number three. And let's see if we can find that crack on here. I'll bring the, the light into the equation. And yes, now I can see that crack right there. Right there is where that crack is using that. You can use this glow material on cast iron. It was designed for aluminum, but you can see how quickly we're able to refine that crack using this UV light in this particular cast iron cylinder head that we're using in our demonstration here today. So, you know, it's not just as simple as walking up, throwing a little powder on, hitting it with the magnet. There's the crack and off we go. Heave that onto the core pile, grab a new one. It's not that easy. There's a step-by-step -step body procedure we want you to go through and be aware of because, again, you can't machine it till you clean it. Once it's clean, then you can inspect it to ensure you have good structural integrity in those castings. If you have questions, you can catch us on the web at goodson.com, or better yet, call us 1-800-533-8010. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.